Lori and welcome to the channel. In today's episode, I want to walk you through a quick edit using a couple new tools that I discovered in Photoshop. So let's jump in and get started. So my vision for this image was to actually make it really a little bit fuller as if it was out, this flower was out in a thick meadow of these gorgeous cone flowers. I also wanted to add a more impressionistic look to the scene. So let's jump in and I'll walk you through a couple quick steps to transform this image. So first thing I'm gonna do is duplicate the background layer. And I'm gonna do that twice because we're gonna need two copies of it. So for the first layer, I'm gonna go ahead, let's turn off the second one. I'm gonna reduce the opacity to about 50%. And now I'm gonna do Command T to transform. I'm just gonna move this flower over and I'm just gonna position it so that it is right here in the image and maybe, maybe a little bit taller than that center image. You could make it taller, you could also make it a little shorter. I'm gonna kinda of have it coming off the scene to create a, a vision that looks like it's in a meadow. So we don't really have a start and stop point. I'm gonna click enter to transform that. And then we will apply a mask. And with our brush at 100% opacity, I'm just gonna clean up the edges, clean off my main subject. So we're just gonna brush those edges off and come around and brush that and just make it look like it's just kind of blending in there. All right, so that looks good so far, just um, getting that kind of cleaned up. All right, so now we're gonna turn on the second copy. I'm gonna go ahead and reduce that opacity to 50%, do our Command T to transform, and I'm gonna move this one over to the left. And I'm gonna position it maybe a little bit raised up as well. That looks pretty good. So just creating a scene as if I'd been able to shoot it that way going to add the mask, and then we're just gonna blend this in. I'm gonna remove all of it off of the center here. And then where there's these lines, I'm gonna come in and just kind of um, make that look like it's behind this flower. All right, I'm gonna reduce the opacity on this one just a little bit more. And I'm liking the way that looks. So I think that's nice. We've got some light bouncing around. We've got light underneath, make sure we've got those lines clean. And so I think this has got the scene the way that I envisioned it when I was shooting. So now that we have that, I want to add some creative elements. So the first thing I'm gonna do is create a stamped layer, Command, Option, Shift, and the letter E. That's going to give us a clean place to start with. All right, now I am going to do a couple different um, creative techniques to this image. So the first thing we need to do is go to image mode and we wanna make sure it's on eight bits. Now this does not impact the quality of your image. It is just needed to use some of the filters that are available in Photoshop. All right, so now we're gonna to go to filter and stylize. And there's a filter that I had never used before and it's called wind. And I discovered it and really liked the effect. So if you scroll out, you can see it's creating some movement. Now there's several options here. You can also change the direction. I'm gonna keep it on from the right. Click OK. And when we zoom in, I'm gonna turn it on and off for you. It's very subtle. It's as if the flowers are blowing in the wind. There's just a little shift. But it's also softening the edges a little bit and it's creating some movement in our background. So I thought it really helped give this image a little bit of a um, kind of creative creative element. So I liked, um, I liked the direction that it was heading in. Okay, so now I'm gonna duplicate this layer and I wanna go up to Filter and under Stylize, there is, let's see. Actually, I think it's under Distort. Yeah, under Distort, you will have the option for Diffuse Glow. I don't know if you've used this one before, but I just discovered it and I love it. So Diffuse Glow is gonna give your image a glow. Now it's also adding a lot of grain, which you may or may not like, but you can reduce that. So I'm gonna take the graininess down maybe to about four or even three. 
So we can just reduce that and then you can increase the glow if you want. Now the glow is going to brighten your image and you may not want it, um, you may not want it that, that bright. You can decide. But I really liked this. I think it just gave a very painterly look to the image. So I'm going to click OK. Now you can see it really brightened the flower. So what I'm going to do is keep that layer on, but I'm going to reduce the opacity. So I'm going to just bring that glow down a little bit and I'm going to add a mask. And what I want to do at about 50% opacity on my main subject, I want to bring back some of the original color and detail because I didn't want that much glow on there. Let me go ahead and take this up to about 60% and just going to bring back some of that color that was on that original. But I do love how it has added that glow quality. So I'll turn it off and on to the rest of the image. And it's just kind of brightened the light that's around the image and just giving it um, some of that beautiful, beautiful glow. So those were the two additional textures that I added. One final thing that you could do to this image if you really want to create an impressionistic kind of scene, let's do another stamped layer, Command Option Shift and the letter E. And another trick that you can do is add some motion. So let's go to Blur, Motion Blur, and you can angle your blur kind of in the direction. If you want to create just a little bit of movement, click OK. And what I'm going to do is reduce the opacity. And we can see now it's just created a little bit more movement, a little bit more drama. You could leave it at this opacity. You could also come down and we could take our brush back to 100% and we could remove it from our subject. if We want to just bring a little bit more of those details out. Adding motion blur can be a fun way to just impact your overall scene in your image. And if you want a little less of it, again, you can reduce that opacity down. Layering all of these options can really give your image a beautiful overall final look. So I hope next time you have a single shot like this, but it's part of an overall garden scene that you will play with adding some additional layers and really transforming to create a gorgeous final scene as if you shot it out in a meadow. Thanks so much for watching everyone. Please take a minute to like, subscribe, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.